Hey folks, welcome to our remote learning with Microsoft EDU. It's our regular webinar that we've started up. And I'm Mike Tholfson. I work on the Microsoft education team and welcome to our show for today. So our agenda, we'll start with the latest news and updates. And those are things you've been doing every day now. We've got the top meetings expert in Teams, maybe in the world, Gordon Chang, Microsoft Teams Education PM, who is a meeting master. And we've also got Michelle's head of school for rent and prep, and she's going to be able to talk about the great things that we've been doing or she's been doing at rent and prep with remote learning. And they've gone fully distance learning. We're in Washington State here. Uh, the schools were shut down a few weeks ago, so Michelle's been doing a lot of great things there. The three links we always review every time are quick links. There's the main Microsoft Education Remote Learning. There's the Teams Education Quick Start Guide. It's a great link to get up and running really fast with Teams. It's really simple. And then we encourage everyone out there to sign up for the Teams Remote Learning Community. We've got a community that is actually over 4,000 strong now from educators around the country and around the world. And we'd really love to collaborate with you they're learning from each other. The Microsoft product team, myself, many others are in that community trying to help out, uh, give tips, tricks, and help with support. Now, in terms of today's updates, there's so many pieces of content and new things coming out. We've got a bunch of new links here. One is our education getting started guide is now upgraded to by persona. So that means the content is now by student, by educator or by parent and guardian. So we've broken it out to make it really easy to sort through depending on your persona or your role in education. Also, because Gordon's here, I want to reiterate there's a fantastic Teams meeting roles link and helps you get figuring out the teacher is a presenter, if the students are attendees, who can mute who, who can boot out who, all those meeting roles are really important. And then we've also got just today we launched our YouTube playlist that has all of our past remote learning webinars. And so that means you can go to YouTube with this link and find all the remote webinars that we've recorded and posted, and you can watch them at your own time. This one here will post probably tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. Now with that, oh, and actually one last thing, we have our schedule public now. So we're always adding more and more guests and shows to this remote learning webinar schedule. That is fully public, share it out, watch it we're adding more things it's already been updated we're going out to uh, the first week of april now and with that now we're going to turn it over to gordon chang from the microsoft teams for education team he's a pm follow him on twitter check him out on linkedin and gordon i'm gonna let you take over the screen now sounds good hi everyone this is gordon chang uh, i'm a, a product manager for teams for education so Today, um, I'm going to walk you through some basic UI and also go through an online lectures 101. Uh, you might have questions about, hey, what should I do before, during, and after a meeting? Or how can I keep the online lecture as safe as possible? Or, hey, if students are muting me when I'm talking. Like, how can I prevent that? So we're going to go through all of those uh, and we're going to go through it uh, step by step. And also, we'll, I'll be sharing with you some kind of uh, new uh, features and uh, resources available for you. So uh, start with the basic. Uh, if you're already aware of Teams, uh, that's OK. Uh, for people who are not so aware, this is kind of like a, a, a team structure. Each team, each class uh, is a team. Uh, we call it a class team. And you can see that uh, you can actually create multiple channels. Uh, if you have different units for different weeks or different projects, you can create those uh, channels so that uh, each channel has specific, uh, everything is in one place. And uh, you know, in terms of scheduling a meeting from Teams, there are multiple ways that you can schedule one. Uh, for there is a way to actually schedule a, a schedule meeting versus a Meet Now meeting. So for Meet Now is something you want to say, hey, I want to start a meeting right away. Uh, how can I do that? Uh, that's the button. You are if you're in the calendar app within Teams, you can hit Meet Now. Uh, versus if you want to actually schedule a particular time, uh, you can schedule a new meeting. Uh, also. When you're scheduling a meeting, you can either say, hey, I want to invite specific people, or you can say, I want to invite the entire channel, which is the entire class. Um, in terms of you know scheduling 
online lectures, we recommend you to actually start uh, using the uh, channel meetings. This way you don't have to manually type in every student's name. You can just say, hey, here's the meeting link and uh, uh, you know all the students will get notified and, and, and shown on their calendar as well. So um, when you're in the meeting, these are the kind of the basic UI. Uh, you can see these uh, different uh, buttons on the bottom. Uh, you can turn your video on and off. You can mute yourself. And I would definitely recommend you open the uh, the, the this chat uh, button, which which actually shows up the meeting chat uh, on the right side. You so you can monitor if there anyone is speaking and, and asking questions as well. Okay, so let's go through the before, during, and after, and and let's walk through it uh, step by step. So um, before, uh, we would recommend you to schedule the channel meeting. And actually, let me just go through the next go to the next slide directly. So before um, scheduling channel meetings, uh, this is where you can uh, uh, specify which channel uh, you're talking about. If you don't have like other channels, you can just use the general channel. Uh, what it does is that once you actually schedule the meeting, you would actually get a post uh, in that channel. So every student in the class can see it and all the conversations will be in here. Um, and also, if you record the lecture after the uh, record is available, it will actually be automatically posted here as well. So everything is actually automatically captured in one place uh, for you to to review or for other students who couldn't join at a time to to uh, participate later as well. So definitely use the scheduled channel meeting. Now, um, one thing that I would we would re definitely recommend is when you schedule after you schedule the meeting, you can see this join meeting. Uh, link and also there's a meeting options. Definitely click on that and what you see would you would see this. Uh, well, our recommendation is that you actually say who can present. Uh, you change it to only me and who can bypass the lobby, change it to people in my organization. So what that means is that um, if I go to the next site, what it means is that actually in uh, Microsoft Teams, for meetings, there's actually different roles. One is for the presenter role, one is for the attendee roles. So if you don't want the attendee to actually mute you or mute other participants, uh, definitely you should uh, make them attendees. So if you, in the previous setting, if you said who can present as only me, then by default, all the students who join uh, will be uh, an, an attendee. That means they won't be able to uh, mute, mute other participants. If you have any like TAs or co-teachers, you can always uh, from the participant pane on the right, you can always uh, make them a presenter, you know, during the meeting as well. So um, after that, we highly recommend that you can share kind of any materials for pre-read. And if you want the documents uh, not to be editable to, from students, uh, definitely you could upload your documents in the uh, general channel in the files tab and there's a folder, a special folder called class materials. Only you can edit, no other students uh, can edit. And of course, when you are posting uh, this message to the students and say, hey, come review the materials before class, you can always uh, uh, type at mention and then type T-E-A-M team which will actually bring up the, 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 the name of the team, for example, B102, and then you can notify all the students uh, in this class. Uh, also, we recommend you that um, if it's your first time, make sure that you do some test code. So if you go to the top right and see that your, your you know, profile pic, you go to the settings and then you go to devices and you can make a test code from there. You can test it out if the quality is good, if the audio is connected, etc. Okay, at start. So um, definitely recommend you if you're, you know, uh, you know, teaching from home and you don't want, you know, background to be to be seen, you can actually uh, enable the background blur. It's only available in the desktop app. And, you know, in the meeting chat, when you're starting, you can add mention again and say, hey, this online class is starting, um, you know, come join. And um, what you could do also do is if you're not planning on sharing any like PowerPoint or document of any kind, you can verbally ask the students to pin your video so that your video would be shown as the the the, uh, the major part of the entire screen. Um, what they how they can do that is they would go to your name uh, of your video, and there when you hover on it, there will be a dot dot dot, and they can click on pin. 
end, um, you could also just double check. Hey, no one should be, you know, talking. You're the teacher. You're giving the lectures, so you can click on the mutual. The button is available in the people pane as well. Okay, so during the meeting, um, these are the few tips that um, you know you can present the content. You can present you know, your entire screen, or you can present the actual, you know, PowerPoint deck or something else. Uh, definitely, if you want other teacher, other students to kind of uh, listen to the lectures later. Definitely start the recording. Um, we are also have a preview of uh, enabling live captions. This is available in desktop and in English. Uh, what it does is that whoever is talking, they will actually show kind of a live uh, captions of what the person is talking about. And of course, uh, that definitely recommend you to uh, show this uh, meeting chat window. So if you click on this, it would actually show the meeting chat so you can see if other people are uh, talking or asking questions. OK, after the meeting, after the lecture ended, uh, definitely you would want to see you know, if there's any chats uh, that you missed during the lectures or if there are any students uh, who listen to the recording later and have uh, any further questions. Everything, as I mentioned, would be stored in the same uh, channel where you created the uh, meeting from. So this would be one single post. You have all the conversations, you have all the recordings there. Let's say if you don't want, if you want to actually highlight where the recordings are, uh, you can actually um, use the kind of the Teams uh, structure where we call it as uh, the tabs. So imagine you're in the week one channel, you can actually add a tab and, and uh, actually connect to your actual recording uh, and say, and so that other students, when they click on this tab, they can directly listen to the uh, recording right away. Um, Fun facts about this entire flow is that this is actually powered by Microsoft Stream, which is free for uh, education. Everything is uh, cloud recorded. So the moment you hit uh, start recording and stop recording, uh, we will actually process everything there and then provide you the link and then post it back right uh, back to the channel um, directly. And uh, as you can see, uh, it would have automated uh, closed captions and you can actually search, you or the student can actually search uh, uh, transcripts right there. Um, and I think we have up to the school can have up to like 500 K of videos and each video it's up to like 50 gig. So it's pretty, pretty decent. OK, so one more thing that I would definitely recommend is that after the lecture ends, um, you don't have that kind of face to face interaction with the students. So what you can do is in order to get a kind of a student pose, you can actually create a very simple survey uh, by using the poly or the forms. And how you can do that is you can actually extend the uh, message options. So when you're in the channel and you're, when you're posting something, there's a dot dot dot. You click on that, you can search for you know different ways of uh, adding surveys, and then you can send the surveys either um, uh, you can send it to surveys to the students who attended as well. Okay, so one more thing to add is when it comes to bandwidth. Let's say if the student uh, doesn't have enough bandwidth or doesn't have you know good enough you know internet quality. Uh, they could uh, join by dialing uh, a phone number, which is available in the uh, meeting information as well. Uh, if they do that, make sure that your IT admin actually enable this. Um, another thing to make sure the bandwidth is, is, is doable is to have limited uh, videos in your live uh, class sessions. So some people, what they do is at the start of the lectures, everyone turns on the video, says hi, uh, chit chat. And then when the lecture starts, all the students would be asked to turn off their video uh, so that we can save uh, bandwidth so that other people or other students who have less bandwidth can you know, get uh, the lecture's uh, video better. Um, another way, if, if it's really not doable, then definitely you could uh, pre-record the content um, yourself and then share the re uh, recording to your students and then have a live uh, meeting chat uh, while people are playing uh, the lecture. OK, cool. So that concludes kind of the online uh, lectures uh, 101. Uh, those are the recommended stuff. Just want to make sure that um, this is only one of the recommendations. We have so many different options available, uh, but in order to keep it safe, in order to keep it as simple as possible, this is kind of uh, my recommended way. So next, uh, the um, LMS and uh, Teams. So if your school already has an LMS, uh, you could actually set up Teams meeting right, right from your LMS. Uh, we actually just launched uh, a blog uh, on, on this where whether you're using Canvas, Blackboard, Squ Squology, Brightspace, it's learning, 
uh, you can actually initiate uh, the uh, uh, um, Teams meeting right there, and then you can copy the link and then share it uh, however you want. So um, in, uh, below is the, uh, the actual blog. Hey, if you're actually looking for, hey, you know what? Yes, there's so much that there's only so much that I can teach online to students. Uh, are there any other trustworthy materials to keep students engaged? Um, so actually there is for virtual field trips or for guest speakers, Microsoft actually provides a free community code Skype in the classroom, uh, so, which is education.skype.com. Uh, what you can do is you you go you go there you sign in you can actually look for all the vetted uh, you know high quality uh, virtual field trips from different museums or different uh, state parks uh, around the globe. So it could be within the United States, it could be in Europe, it could be in Africa, it could be in Egypt, any anywhere. And you can also find uh, guest speaker sessions. Maybe there's a book author uh, that is maybe it's in your history class that it's uh, you know related. You can use that. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, definitely follow uh, Skype Classroom uh, on Twitter. OK, so we have heard your feedback about, you know, upcoming uh, enhancements where our teams are working around the clock to try to make it happen as soon as possible. Um, so if you want to stay informed, uh, in addition to joining the, the team, definitely stay informed via user voice. Uh, so we actually track them and we post the, you know, updates on, on that forum as well. You can also see what other educators are thinking around uh, the same feature idea. Uh, what we're working on now is uh, we're actually allowing, we're working on a feature which allows teachers to end the meeting. So imagine you're at the end, end of the lectures, you're, you're, ending the, you're ending the meeting, but you don't want other students to linger uh, you know, in the meeting after you left. Uh, so what you could do is you could actually just click end the meeting, which actually automatically one time kicks out all the other students from the meeting. Um, we're also working on making sure that you have a way to download the attendance list easily. Um, and by the way, each of them has a user voice feedback over there. You can just search the exact same term or search, uh, you know, in the forum and you can get uh, latest updates. And the last one is Let's say everyone is muted. All the students are muted. Uh, what if they have questions? They would post it on the meeting chat, but if they have questions, they want to get your attention. We're actually working on a feature called raise hand uh, where they can they can actually raise hand and from you from the presenters view, you would actually you would actually see a kind of notification and icons about hey, there are uh, you know so many people asking uh, raising hands and uh, who are they and then you can address them, you know, uh, directly. Cool. So. <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't raise my hand yet, but when I can, I'll raise my hand and say woohoo. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks. Uh, cool. So, um, just um, you know, this is kind of the my, using Microsoft Teams uh, as online lectures. Uh, if you have any questions, we have a Q and A uh, later, and these are the addi additional kind of cheat sheet uh, or for IDM means to get started, and also the step by step video that I really really like uh, personally. Cool. Back to you, Mike. Hey, thanks, Gordon. Ton of great stuff here. And I know there's a lot of questions around meetings and videos and recordings and online lectures. So I think, Gordon, you might be one of the most popular people in the world of educators right now because you've got a lot of great information that people are hungry to learn more about. So definitely <laughs> follow Gordon on Twitter. Ask him all of your questions. He loves answering questions on Twitter. And we're going to now move to our next guest. And we have Michelle Zimmerman. And she's going to take over and screen share here. But Michelle is from a local school, so we live in Washington State. And Michelle Zimmerman is the head of school at Renton Prep. And that's a school that's very close to the Seattle area. And so, Michelle, if you want to share your screen, or Gordon, if you want to unshare your screen now, and we're going to have, have Michelle take over. So on that second slide, I have those colorful images and I drew that on fresh paint. And this was several years back. And the reason I pulled it up is because our focus is still on having students center. All the work we're doing around them is to support the students and have them as that ultimate end goal. So when we're in real life, when we're working with the kids and we're thinking about how to have this face to face human interaction, we're thinking about the teachers and developers who are working on these tools. We're thinking about the coaching to support the teachers, the assess assessment and environment, and thinking about types of adaptive learning Learning, the research that goes into it, policy and in-service and PD. As we move forward, going to the next slide, we can see what some of these kinds of things look like in action. 
there are blurry lines. I didn't want them to be really solid hard Venn diagrams in that first image because these things blur into other areas. And we want there to be really involved human connection, human touch, and we know that from psychology that kids really do benefit from even high fives. And there are research that kids will even respond better to high fives than they will to something that's dancing on the screen as a little reward. So how do we go from a setting like this where it's high touch and high tech, but not having the kids sit just behind screens at desks into a situation where we're all of a sudden saying, guess what kids? You're behind the screen all the time. That's all the human interaction you get from us. So as we move to the next slide, we think about what that kind of transition means for us as educators to go from something where we see kids face to face to now they're looking at a screen. This though has been absolutely amazing for us to be able to have a tool like Teams because it gives us the best possible situation to simulate some of the kinds of real life things that we want to do with them, but it requires us to be really creative in a way to have that kind of dynamic interaction, especially when they can't be face to face with someone else. So I wanted this ninth and 10th grade page just to show a little bit of what's going on now before I transition into showing early childhood and how we're using that cross-age mentoring that was already built into our school to help support across distance. So this, um, you'll see the ninth and 10th grade cohort and there is a general channel for them. Each of those separate groups, group A, B, C, and D, one of them is hidden and their Spanish and their PE group are all there to support small group discussions, video calls when we have them regroup and then group again. Um, but then you're able to see the first assignment was for readiness work for the design thinking and evidence that they created. Part of that was to not only have them understand why the design thinking process is important to us to train them for the future, but right now we're actually living it. Since September, we've been saying to the kids in high school, there are going to be times and places in your life where things will take a complete turn. You have no idea what to do next and there's no answer key. And so you usually don't get that kind of quick feedback as you do right now where we can say remember September when we we're saying that here we are there's no answer key for any teacher any school system any student or parent in this situation but right now you have the opportunity to take those design thinking skills and start with empathy what do we care about who do we want to reach and then ultimately say how can you teach that to someone else because it's not enough to be able to memorize the design thinking steps we need to get the students to the point where they can engage with it do something with it and help teach someone so we can move on to the next Next um, slide. Thank you for running those for me. I really appreciate that. While this one is still on with a little bit of a lag, you might have seen the Funky Fort Friday. Our PE teacher had this idea of bringing in something that can bring an engineering design concept into the home so that they can think about building forts and start building those memories and social emotional connections that they can bring their computer inside that fort and then have a family kind of interaction that's outside of the computer screen. We still do want to balance that computer and human interaction for as many people as they do have, even if it's self quarantined. Um, and then to realize that there are different ways that she as a PE teacher could really be creative with this. Uh, she had not used Flipgrid before or Teams in her PE teaching in the way that um, was really like dynamic interaction engaging other than notifications for the kids, but she's really jumped in and gone all out to figure out ways that we can continue physical education, whether someone's in a small apartment or whether they have the ability to step outside, that she has challenges from early childhood all the way through high school. So if they have several kids in the same family, they're able to help, help support each other. And if you can move to the next slide, please. All of this goes back into our vision and mission for the school. We want the kids to be able to really understand the art of teaching with technology in connecting through humanity. And it's easier to say and do and experience as kids are face to face working with each other and having that balance of screen time and in person time. I think there's still maybe a lag. If not, if you could move to the next slide, that'd be great. Um, and so some of these things are challenges for us to be able to figure out how to simulate those. So like still a little bit of a lag, <laughs> but as I'll describe a little bit, we can move to the next slide faster after that. Um, there are screenshots of the Renton Reporter articles talking about how kids were starting to share with other people. And this slide is great too. This one skipped to the next one, um, but it gives a little bit of example of those funky Fort Fridays and how we can still be alone together and communicate, um, bringing families together. We can move to the next one. 
because part of this is about humanity and who we are as people. We know that this is not just a little blip in the radar for just a few days and just holding pattern until we can get back to normal. Whatever that idea is of normal and what that will become is something that we're going to have to adjust as educators and figure out what that means for us to still bring in those memories that they build in this time as opposed to just a sense of uncertainty and fear. Our schools had themed dress days just as many schools do. They may be like spirit week or it may be something that's highlighting the work that people have done. Um, so we decided to bring that in right away so that they had something that they can share with other people. So Monday was stuffed animal or real animal day, Tuesday hat day, Wednesday game character and cosplay. Thursday will be socks and dancing at a distance because our school has dance programs and that unfortunately got postponed. But we recorded each other, each of the classes dancing and then we're going to live stream that so they can keep rehearsing those dance steps when they're at home across distance and still bring a sense of normalcy and then coming back together. And then Friday pop culture, please go to the next slide. Um, so part of that is still bringing in those pieces of humor and relatedness and remembering what kind of things we could do together. And this came out of an idea actually from the ninth and 10th graders because the first day we went live off site. Kids were really excited to start picking up things around them. One of them brought up a glass blowing object that he created several years back and started explaining it. One of them showed um, their dog who wanted to just be right on their lap and learn along with them. And so that really inspired this idea of let's do show and tell high school edition so you can show some of the things that are important to you in your life. This fits well with our idea of culture and identity being essential to the learning process. And with the wide variety of perspectives we have from our families, it really still allows us to bring in that human connection. So this was some from Hat Day and being able to have that connection where they see each other, even though it's at a distance, it still at least makes it feel a little bit more personal and human. Can you move to the next one, please. Part of this also goes into some of the work that I've been doing across the last couple of years with the idea of artificial intelligence and what does that mean for humanity. There's an entire section on how AI can support teachers and chock full of Microsoft content, direct projects. Little did I know at that time that we would take this design thinking project and move it completely remote because I had built it in a way that students would be able to unplug from technology and be able to communicate with each other. You can move to the next one. And as they communicate with each other, the ability to start bouncing off ideas and being able to get some of that um, experience that we can't get in the same way of repeating and rote memorization. Um, it's easier to switch over to things in rote memorization on computer screens where we can give them multiple choice responses or give them big chunks of text to read. Right now, what you're looking at does look like a huge chunk of text, but this was geared towards the um, high school students being able to have a background and a guide guideline and plans as they're working with their younger buddies. And I wanted them to see that this is not just about them teaching younger buddies how to do and engage in show and tell. This is them coming up with a procedure. That procedure is something that transfers into AP computer science. How do you come up with a procedure for something? How do you look at protocols? What happens when something breaks and doesn't go the way you expect? And at the same time, even though we're at a distance, we're looking at the Common Core state standards for speaking and listening. I've been engaging the high school students in understanding what these core standards are and why people even came up with them and now why it's important to consider those as we're looking at distance communication because we know that communicating with people in person is very different than it is communicating over a device. So I wanted them to understand that those kind of standards are still valuable for them to learn now and even more if they do global collaborations in the future that if they learn these skills in this setting in this time and place it will better position them for those types of future collaborations. But knowing it won't work to just say hey kids get together in a team with your younger buddies that you already develop partnership with and go do something awesome that's too broad and it doesn't allow for something to be structured enough to be able to provide that support and security of well, I don't know what to say to them or what do I do next? So I worked through multiple different steps with them like call your buddy, make sure they're on the team, make sure you have some kind of memory. Do you remember that time we were together and we went on this field trip or I remembered that you liked this thing to start building that relational connection before they even got into the point of the show and tell. The show and tell became somewhat of like an icebreaker for them that ultimately led into them being able to have this dialogue and discussion about visual thinking strategies that they did with art and then leading that into this design thinking process. You can move to the next slide, please. 
And so from there, I gave them criteria inside of the assignment that I built for them in Microsoft Teams. And that criteria gave them a rubric of a guideline of what kinds of things that I would be looking for in that video. The video recording overall, like once they submitted that link, was the audio clear? Did the video links work? Were they using their time effectively? Um, and then the first steps. So those steps were there as checklist items for them. One of the two of the older team members were the manager for that to go through that list as they're on the call and say, did we hit all these things? Is there something we need to go over? And the other one was responsible for conducting the recording or being able to help, help capture the attention of the younger buddies. If you can move to the next slide, please. And then for those of you who haven't seen the integration with assignments, just to give you a glimpse of what it looks like when they submit those assignments and I'm able to give that feedback. What gives me a great opportunity here is to be able to have that video link that I can look at later and be able to be another set of ears in on those conversations and watched how they developed those interactions with their buddies so I can go back and then on my own figure out what do we need to do to address some of that conversation. Next slide, please. You can move through the next ones pretty quickly, like just to give a couple seconds for each of those. So I'll talk over those. This is just a little bit up closer um, to see what that group looked like in the next group is um, during the time that they were showing and giving the process of for the stuffed animal day show and tell and as you see the next slide the younger buddy it was at the top had the choice of either a stuffed animal or a real pet and for most cases the kids were showing their real pet live right next to them but what i thought was interesting in this case on the next slide you'll see that she holds up a phone of a photo of her pet and that was a really creative solution because maybe her pet wasn't with her right there um, or maybe she wanted a quiet space to work. I didn't know all the details for that one, but just seeing the creative solutions kids come up with this. Move to the next slide, please. And same with these. You can move through these slides relatively quickly and I'll just speak over them as you're progressing through. This next slide is the next phase in that process was having the older students share their screen and show what this complete the line, the squiggle line looks like. And so when they said that, then this visual thinking strategies is what's going on in this picture, what do you think? And this was an example of thumbnails from an older buddy that they showed their younger buddy. Look at all these different things. Can you find where that squiggle line showed up and how I created something new out of it? I'm doing the same project that you are, but I'm ultimately gonna create a draft and then I will come up with something different and I'll show you my final draft. Your class is doing the same thing, but we wanted to be able to give you some ideas about how to proceed and what, what this looks like. So what that does is give them a secondary option and opportunity to try and think through and describe their thinking. This was all led out by doing something that we've never tried before, and it was kind of gutsy. We wanted all of the kids in fifth through 10th grade to be able to watch the same documentary, the science of art and the art of science, looking at paper folding and all the different applications. So even though we're at a distance, we don't want them to just stay behind a screen and only respond to questions that have like a yes or no answer or multiple choice, although those are still important to us for formative assessment. We wanted to see if there was a way, instead of just sending them a link and saying, watch this documentary, we'll talk about it later, to have it live streamed. And so we did use the live event through Teams and then we had this setup that looks a little bit complicated, but the two teachers in the front, you can see Ashlyn on the left and Michelle on the right. They were in two different locations talking to me about how they were managing each of their classes. Chris is on the far left and he's getting one of the teams set up. The computer in the back was running the documentary and then he had his mobile device. You can move to the next slide. And that mobile device allowed him to see the real time um, uh, interaction with the students so that we could see how they were watching the film, where to stop it, and how to have discussions. It allowed us to do break off groups with them instead of just having one large discussion at the end, and it allowed us to see engagement. So just as you're seeing these faces from the early childhood, when you look at their faces in that kind of panel and then click on the um, names that are at the, the base of the screen, you're able to see a level of engagement who's paying attention. While the kids are watching the screen for watching a film or a movie, you're able to see where their eyes are tracking. And on a psychology perspective, perspective, this is really fascinating because it gives us insight into where the kids are looking, what their focus is on, where they're paying attention to things. And as you can see the chat open on the side next to Marcy Chang on the left hand picture, I was able to go in with the older students and ask them questions as the documentary was progressing. And what that did for me was allow me to see who was following the information, what other information or questions they had. And then when we paused the video, we brought them into smaller groups, just as you're seeing here with the younger kids, where they could discuss one or two questions and then come back to that video um, all the way together. So you can move on to the next slide. 
And so these kind of conversations can happen in a lot of different ways. The photo on the side also showed OneNote and how the teachers were using that OneNote to engage at the same time as the conversation. The photo on the left is a student who just got his cast off and to be able to still celebrate those little victories as a class still brings in some of that kind of human connection. The one that's on the right side of the screen is just a little bit more of showing off their hats for hat day today. You can move on to the next slide. And then this next one is showing with early childhood different types of ways to share the screen for literacy and conversations surrounding books and then a lot of different apps that exist out there to be able to have that kind of conversation to guide kids through those kinds of tools that exist out there um, even if they haven't used them before. Another one of the things that some of the younger grades have done, even if they didn't start Flipgrid in the classroom in person, they were able to walk them through using Flipgrid for the early childhood as well. And you can move to the next one, please. Um, some of the types of things that we're also concerned about are having social and emotional check-ins with the kids. We wanna know that they're okay. And when we don't get to see them every day, there's a chance that we miss those little nonverbals and the interactions that they have with classmates. So some of those kinds of things um, require us to go another step beyond and figure out how to check in with them socially and emotionally. Some of them have been using forms and then having images in them. And one of the teachers figured out how to pull in some of the images from um, one of the Pixar movies that talked about emotions and then have the kids who are younger be able to click on those to feel to say what they were feeling like. And then for older kids, we have different types of formats and check ins. Um, so let's go to the next slide. And then I think I just want to mention this last one was we're asking our staff to jump in and try things, knowing that there's a good chance they might not work as expected. And so this is my very first live event that we had for all school and what it looked like for me on the producer side and figuring those kinds of things out within a day or two. It's really great because the features in Teams are simple enough for you to just be able to pick up and try it within a day or two. It doesn't take a huge amount of training. Yes, there may be little user error things from time to time or little boxes that you didn't consider checking, but if you go in and play around with those first, you'll start to see conceptually where these things go, what they do, and how you can go in to fix them. So we're also recommending for our teachers that we have students play around in some of those tools and see what they can do to, we use the word break them, once not actually breaking them, but to see where some of those little glitches can be. So one of the students today, uh, just before this call, told me that he figured out how to completely throw someone off of the call. Some of the kids in seventh and eighth grade yesterday were having fun muting the teachers. Um, and at first we couldn't tell if we accidentally bumped something and muted ourselves, or if someone internally was doing that. And so these are some of the little things that we um, didn't notice in those features and what existed until that time. But now I'm asking the kids to specifically go in and see what features they can find and how they can be used to our benefit and how they can support others. I didn't think there would be many people on this live event because we just got the link out to people that morning. And I was surprised that we had 100 unique devices logged in. So that part was really fun for me to see. Um, so that's all that I have right now. And if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. And if there are questions in the chat, um, but I'll turn that back over to Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us today. It was amazing to see all the work you're doing with younger students, with middle school students. And whenever we have a chance to work with you in terms of innovation and, and cutting edge, I think you're always at the forefront. and. Uh, same thing here. You're doing incredible things with technology and distance learning. So thanks for sharing all that. And all of this will be available on the PowerPoint afterwards. So the whole deck, everything you're doing here and this video will be posted online as well. So just a quick recap, the main Microsoft Education remote learning site, the Teams EDU quick start guide, and then always make sure if you have people who want to sign up for our remote learning community, please do that. We've got lots of great stuff going on in there. Then today's PowerPoint and support, and actually that PowerPoint link is not up to date. Um, we'll fix that before we post it, but all the PowerPoint links are posted and you can get all of them for each day that we do. And then lastly, uh, we've got accessibility and remote learning coming up tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we have Michelle Freed, the general manager of the education experiences team. Also, Jonathan Briggs from Eastside Prep, who also took his school locally into a distance learning situation very rapidly 
he'll be sharing a lot of tips and tricks and what they did and what's been the reaction with educators and students. So Thursday should be really interesting as well. And also just as a bonus tomorrow, well, it's not a Microsoft sponsored one. We have Alice Keeler and Rachel Berger doing IEP and 405 tools for remote learning with Microsoft. And so that is going to be uh, going on tomorrow and we'll have the link in the deck as well. And so with that, uh, oh, and sorry, one last bonus thing, two bonus things today. On April 21st, we have a tweet meet and that's going to be hosted by Marilyn, who's also a producer on these webinar events. But that's going to be April 21st and it's going to be all about Microsoft Teams, remote learning. And so mark your calendars for that. So thank you very much for the webinar today and, and thanks for standing by with all of our technical uh, fun that we are experiencing and hope to see you tomorrow. Thanks.